This is the Show Up Show, helping coaches, service providers, leaders, and entrepreneurs to master showing up to build their brand, authority, and grow their business. Whether it's showing up on social media, in front of an audience, on a live interview, or an actual stage, this podcast is going to help you overcome visibility fear to confidently brand yourself as the authority in your industry. I'm Joan Chan, aka the Confidence and Visibility Queen, and I am on a mission to share how I went from a nobody to the confident leader I am today, what I have learned and what I have done to build my brand and business from scratch, and help you do the same so that you can make an impact in the world with the meaningful work that you do. Whether you are new to the business world or feeling unsure about public visibility, or you want to be seen and heard in a way that doesn't feel icky but authentic to you, you will discover how to become visible in your own unique way and show up as the confident entrepreneur you have always dreamed about becoming. Now, it's time to get you show up and be confidently visible so you can easily attract more clients and opportunities for yourself. Joining us today is a professional technology advisor and consultant specializes in disaster recovery solutions. His professional journey in IT has been over three decades in the making, fortified by a wealth of industry experiences. He has shaped his ability to deliver Facebook disaster recoveries and business continuity solutions that boast efficiency and productivity. Starting as an IT technician and progressing to the proud owner and CEO of an IT company, his experiences have given him a deep understanding of the diverse challenges business owners often encounter. He is committed to identifying your unique needs, your challenges, whether your company is yet to establish a business continuity plan or your existing plant needs an upgrade or optimization. So guys, help me in welcoming our special guest today, the expert in disaster recovery solutions, Ron Klink. Hi, Ron. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me, Joanne. Pleasure being with you. So before we dive into the how, you know, the nitty gritty, tell us why every company must establish a business continuity plan and what does it actually mean? Sure. So what about... What a business continuity and disaster recovery plan means is given is to prepare for any type of natural event that might happen, whether it be um, uh, at something that's out of their control uh, from what they say from act of God or, or act of nature. So that could be from a, a power outage within a, within a building, uh, you know, within, let's say, a pipe, a pipe of water could burst within, the, within a computer room. Uh, stuff like that. So different natural disasters like that that are uneventful and not pleasurable in in have in dealing with that at that time of month. But where you practice, where you practice these types of uh, tabletop exercises or drills, right, uh, on a consistent basis, you will be prepared for it for when these types of events happen. Uh, this way, okay, we 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 we've studied our manual. We know what to do. There's no time for hesitation. So the, the team will be in place and they'll know what, who to contact, what, what the next procedure is, and keep everybody in, in the open communication. Let's, let's know what's going on and where they're at within the process. Wow. Yeah, I didn't think of that until now because it's like when you're in school, you practice, you know, the like emergency plan, right? When um, mm-hmm. building is on fire, what do you do, right? Um, so, yeah, I think it's so much for sharing that. And so what motivated you to start a company from being an IT technician for so many years to starting a, your own IT company? And is it because you personally, you know, had some disaster in the past that you didn't uh, manage to, you know, avoid? And is that how it inspired you to start a company and helping others? Sure, great question. So for me, I've been in the IT industry for over 30 plus years um, and working for the, in the private sector. And throughout my, my, my IT career, we've, uh, I've gained a lot of knowledge from different mentors and different people I've work, worked with and collaborated with over the, over the time. So for me to take on a next challenge level in my life, I wanted to start a new 
some new company of my own where I think I could make a, 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 an impact within the IT industry for the small and medium-sized businesses, which sometimes don't get that much attention as larger corporations do uh, these days. So where that sometimes the the professional of IT customer service uh, co collaboration is not so much hand in hand in the small to medium sized business market as we do as larger companies get because they have a lot more uh, higher budget and a lot more employees to be served and stuff like that. So that's one of the reasons I started an IT company uh, with diverse in doing different parts of computer hardware, software. Uh, telephone installations, etc. Uh, just to start that and to gain the knowledge and the leadership and the entrepreneurship in that area, and having that experience uh, added to my uh, added to my uh, portfolio. So it's been a great uh, footpath in walking those w walking on that on that trail to gaining entrepreneurship leadership. I didn't have it before when I was an IT technician. I was just working for for for, another, for different companies, which I worked for great companies throughout my whole career. But this was the next step in my in my uh, in my process for, for my IT professional career here. Wow, that's so inspiring. Yeah, because a lot of my listeners they are actually entrepreneurs themselves, or they are business owners, or they are trying to be an entrepreneur, right? So, and a lot of time we are so afraid because of um, starting a company is not an, it's not easy at all. You need, you need to have the business plan, you need to have support, you need to have mentors, you need to have the right strategies, right? Starting a business is easy, but making a successful business is not an easy job, right? So um, tell us more about your company and who do you work with because you mentioned about small business owners and like who do you really want to help and are there any specific industry that you help specifically or just um, any small businesses so great question as well so yeah so once i i had my when i had my managed service provider company uh and I, I closed that earlier this year and then i started this new venture in disaster business continuity and disaster recovery so my my plans hasn't really my focus hasn't really changed. I'm still serving the small to medium sized business community uh, for, for in the private sector companies. So and the first type of industries I've been working with um, a variety of them, but for I'm focusing in on non for profits, healthcare industries, insurance, um, health and wellness industries, especially in today's world, uh, and given what's going on and, and everything. So my focus really hasn't changed that much. But if you know, if a if a um, a financial institution comes my way or a law firm comes my way, uh, stuff like that, I will not turn down the business because they need any type of uh, my IT services for business continuity, disaster recovery plans. So that's that's really I won't turn down those types of customers if they're looking. They need help from me. So what are your because you are working with so many different um different industry and I'm I suppose everyone is in uh, you know, at different stages in their business. So how do you then tailor a plan, a bespoke a bespoke plan, as you rightfully said, um to how do you identify and then come up with a solution? Like how what is your process? Uh so we do we go into a, meet with a person either virtually or in person depending on their location and we do an assessment of their current infrastructure. Now, every company is different, okay? Just like when you're buying a car, every instrument is, 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 is set differently. It's located in different sex, different place, right? So you gotta get used to the, the, uh, the, the mechanics of everything. So when, you go, when we speak to the client, potential client, we do an assessment of, of their current complex what they're currently working with, whether it be they're all computer hardware, which is all the computer hardware is on premise, or they're doing a hybrid, or they're completely 100% cloud environment. So we do a free assessment with them, see what's the best solution for them, what their current issues are. Do they have a, a business continuity or disaster recovery plan? Um, if they do, okay, let's work with what you have. Let's see if we can improve the process. Maybe there's some holes that you're, that they're missing. Or if they don't have nothing in place, which some companies do do don't have, uh, then we then we do everything from A to Z. And this way, we, we we begin with them from the from the beginning and we end them in the process. But still, even after the process, we still serve serve and support them uh, afterwards, and just to keep that 
relation, client relationship with us. And based on your experience here, after working with so many different companies, what are some of the common challenges that you, you know, most businesses are facing? Because, you know, when it comes to disaster recovery and, you know, and how, yeah, what are some of the common challenges that you often um, come across? Some of the common challenges are from budget. Some people don't think they, they, don't, this, they don't have enough money for this budget. And other other challenges are educating the the, the clients. Uh, they don't think they they've been in business for so long. You know, two, 20, 30, 40 years. They've been doing the same type of process every day in day out. Um, however, whatever num number of days they've been working, it's never failed them. So they don't think they need these types of service when actually they do. Given climate change has been has been a big thing these past few years. You know, with hurricanes, floods, uh, you know, bad, you know, different ones throughout the throughout the world, um, earthquakes. So different entities like this, when these type of natural disasters happen, right? They companies need to be prepared for it, and that's why I bring this type of event knowledge and events to their front door, saying, look, this you need to prepare for this for when this type of events happen, especially for cyber attacks now. You have ransomware, you have all these other types of different viruses that computer hackers get in. They steal the company's information, you know, and especially if you're a, a legal, law, legal law firm, they have private client information. And so there's a lot of personal information there, whatever types of law that, that that company is practicing, or if you're a financial institution, you know, you're holding all that money uh, accountable yeah, definitely. So it's very important to educate them and say, look, I, I tell my services to what their needs are. I'm not going to oversell what they don't need because that's that's not that's not the way it should be done. It's being honest and upfront in this way. They trust you. There's a trust between both client and comp and business owner for for that. So that's why it's important to educate them and say, look. This is the resolution I came for you. This is how much it's going to cost. All right, let's. If it's too much, let's work out. Let's do. All right, we'll do project A first, then project B next, next, next quarter. Yeah, yeah. I feel like education is so important because there's the reason why I start this podcast to educate people on more on various topic, right? Um. So. Because a lot of my audience, they are actually running an online-based business because of COVID, right? Everyone just stay at home and started an online business. So, and because of the trend that we are going with AI, everything, right? So in what way do you, because I, you also mentioned about several attacks earlier, in what way do you assist business, online business owners in safeguarding their businesses against cyber attacks and data breaches, as you mentioned? Sure. Uh, so, so for online business owners, especially for business, online business owners who work from home doing like e-commerce, uh, they, they do business through Amazon, eBay, uh, those type of e-commerce businesses, uh, or if they have their own types of e-commerce business they may use. So basically it's, it's really simple. It's just like um, you have a car, right? You want to take care of the basic mechanics. You want to change the oil, rotate the tires, stuff like that. This way you don't wind up on the side of the road and all the other cars are passing you by, right? So basically, you know, make sure you have a good antivirus program like Semant Norton Semantic, McAfee, one of those types of popular uh, antivirus programs. They may come with their own type of uh, version of firewall protection and everything else. And make sure that you're not uh, downloading anything that any type of site that may be malicious, uh, that may or someone may send you an email uh, that may be that you may think, recognize, but it may look a little bit different. But just use caution, uh, use your common sense, and say, "All right, does this look familiar? I don't remember seeing that. You know, this email looks good, but I, I'm not sure. Yeah, you know, when you use you when you use your common sense, uh, then you'll be okay. Um, just just stick to the basics." And you will be fine. And just make sure you have the you do virus scans every once in a while, just to make sure that everything looks good. Even though the, the software would do it automatically in the background, but you could do it manually yourself as well. Mm, just use your common sense, right? If it sounds too good to be true, that is probably not true. <laughs> exactly. So, which types of companies or businesses are more are particularly, you know, susceptible to 
or more vulnerable towards disaster or cyber attacks? Uh, there have been a lot over the years. Uh, you know, especially most uh, most commonly up in hospitals uh, have been have been attacked. Uh, education sectors, so different school dis different schools that have been attacked as well with cyber ransomware attacks uh, these days. So those are those are the common ones. But really, anyone that doesn't have a good type of uh, company fi computer firewall that that's uh, that doesn't have any um, closed ports for them so they so they don't have any type of closed ports meaning that all right i can't go to facebook uh i can't go see what's the latest uh baseball sports standings or what what car am i going to buy you know certain uh what they call computer firewall ports that give you access to the internet stuff like that should be closed more it's so this way hackers can't come in and people can't People can't internal people can't access it out. Stick to what you you know and what's working for you in the company. So make sure certain sites are closed off to your employees. Um, if the employee wants to go see what's on Facebook, okay, let them go on their uh, mobile device or they want to use their their tablets outside of the company and let them do it. Let them be a, be at their own risk and not the company's not putting the company in any type of jeopardy. Okay, so how does your solution, Disaster Recovery Solutions, help ensure that businesses can remain resilient or functional, um, in the face of unforeseen events? Like, what happened if really it, you know natural disaster happened, and how do they make sure they are resilient and they can recover fast? Great question. So, best way is doing basic basic practices. Okay, uh, just as as I use the example of the car. Um, if they do the basic preventive maintenance within their company, so they do tabletop, tabletop exercises, they do or what they call drills. So what that means is some companies will do their disaster recovery and business continuity uh, drills uh, once a year. Some maybe do twice a year. My own professional opinion, I think they do should do it every quarter. But if they do it at least twice a year, that would be great. And this way... The only reason why I say do it more than doing it less, this way, if there's any holes within their plans that they do right now, okay, we could, they, the gaps could be filled. It could be done. It could be corrected after the first drill. Then the next one, all right, it'll be a lot more smoother. Uh, this way, the process is smooth. There's no, they're not going to have any hiccups in, in, the, in the process. So this way, we're back up and running. Everything's good. And let let's move on. You know, once we do, if we, if there's mistakes in in the second round, all right, we're going to correct it. We're going to make sure we're going to modify it. And this way, our problems will be taken care of. And the best way for companies to to do this is to have a good type of um, disaster recovery uh, service in, in for it, whether it be using from a Microsoft standpoint, Amazon, or any other type of big companies like that. Now. Some companies may think, oh, I can't afford those. I can't afford Microsoft. I can't afford Amazon. Okay, not a problem. I have com companies that are smaller, that can, a more affordable, that can do the same thing, but on a smaller scale. So they may, uh, the company may not be able to afford those bigger name companies to do to use their services. That's why I have more flexibility where smaller companies can afford have can afford uh, a company like Acronis. Or so, or so on. That could be a little bit more affordable, and this way I can help. It's easier, and the the process may be the same, but it's they get also a better return on their investment. Yeah, absolutely. So, how about online business owners like e-commerce, um, uh, e-commerce businesses? Like, do you how do you test your? I so I'm not you know an expert in this field, so I don't know I don't know the right word. But how do you test your? system right do you hire someone to hack your system or like how do you how do you test it sure uh some companies do have uh, uh hire uh computer hackers to try and ha really? hack their system so yes that that's one way of doing it you are correct on that um other more that could be sometimes a little bit expensive as well uh depending on you know who you get and everything else but uh to, for more of a, a an internal and external resource process what we do is what they call is firewall penetration testing, okay, or what they call pen testing for that in that matter. So what that is is doing a simple 
assessment or the company's computer firewall computer system, making sure that there's no holes in there, uh, if there, there could be a breach. You know, like I was explaining a, little, a few minutes ago, you know, if, if, there's a, if you have a uh, computer firewall that's open access to, to the internet where people could check their social media, they could check the, you know, they could go on eBay to shop and whatever else it may be, stuff they really shouldn't be doing, uh, is going to be is going to be that company's going to be more vulnerable for cyber attacks, ransomware attacks, uh, any type of uh, Trojan horse type of um, attack for them. And that company's going to be really uh, in a tight spot when uh, the ransomware hits. So and they're going to be running with with running around with chicken without a head. <laughs> so, but this definitely is the. Um, Firewall penetration testing is where it comes in. This is where we'll see the report. All right, you have port 80 that's open that should be closed. Port 10 needs to be open for, for this access to be over to be to have the access for for the company to do their due diligence and to do their work that they're supposed to be doing. Yeah, and I feel like it's not just the business owners. We as consumers are also the victim because I can't tell you how many times, just how many times my credit card got hacked <laughs> because I bought something online, right? I submitted my credit card number. I gave everything. Um, the next moment I found my, you know, bank statement, I have foreign transaction that was not um authorized by me. So I just can't tell you how many times I have to change and replace my credit card just because I bought something online. I had online transaction, right? It's terrible. I'm just saying. Um, so when when do you recommend implementing these you know security measures to ensure the protection of our business are there any specific factors that we as business owner have to take into consideration that signal the right time for deployment or implementation i think it should be done as soon as possible it's just like there there's never a right time to do to do stuff like this um there's, there'll never be a right moment when you're a business owner you know for a small to medium-sized business owner there's never a right time um what you need to have you need to have the right if you don't have the knowledge in this and if, if you have a, if you have a, your own small it staff one maybe two people on on board in for the company all right then then you got to start ask as a business owner you have to start thinking okay what is my what is my current inf infrastructure like? Computer infrastructure like? Um, are we susceptible to attacks? You know, um, instead thinking yes. All right. What when's what's the net, how much profit am I going to make at the end of the year? Uh, you know, what's the company going to make profit wise for the end of the year? It's yes. It's good to be thinking like that as well. But also thinking okay, are we susceptible to cyber attacks? Um, in case there's the power outages within the, within our office. Are we, are we are we prepared to, for that when that event happens? Are we prepared? Do we have a manual in place to for for this? So there's like I said, there's never a right time to to uh, for this to be to be ready. Um, it should be done as soon as possible. That would be my best uh, professional honest opinion. And and start looking if you if a company doesn't have it in place right now, start doing it. Whether it be you know people have time off or you know the company's closed for a holiday or whatever it may be. You know, start the, doing it. The process is not going to happen overnight, but it will take, you know, maybe a week. Is you know about that time. It doesn't take long to put into put into place. Mm, yeah, I love the answer because there's never the right time, right? And most people wait until it's too late, and uh, <laughs> they, you know, then they ask for help, but it's too late. So, do you offer like free assessment call for people who are interested? Yes, most definitely. Def they, they definitely, I offer the free assessment for, if they want to call me over on the phone, they want to do a virtual call like we're doing here on Zoom, definitely, or they want to email me, that's definitely a, as well. They can schedule a, a free, book a free consultation with me, 30-minute consultation with me at no cost. During that time, I'll see what they have, what their current infrastructure is like, and give them a good solution of what recommendations I may think. And and we can see what their uh, their budget is and where they're looking to uh to where I can help. Yeah, awesome. And before I wrap up, is there anything that you really want to share? Perhaps I didn't ask you or didn't let you, or maybe your final piece of advice for everyone, all business owners out there. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. So you know, for anyone that wants to reach out to me, they go re reach visit my website ronklink. co. That's R O N K L I N K dot co 
they want if they want to call me uh plus one for country code here in the united states 718-568-6161 or if they want to visit my linkedin profile they can book, book a free call with me as well that way so uh, email me info at ronclink.co so those many ways to get in touch with me in these in, the, in today's technology um but tip i want to give uh as a takeaway um be resilient use your common sense um you know always think that okay how's how's our current technology company's technology are we are we up to, are we up to uh speed on our computer hardware do we have are we using the the latest technology, you know, are there any gaps to, to be filled? You know, are we susceptible to any type of attacks, uh, whether it be a cyber attack or or any type of natural disaster? So, you know, think of what, what's going to happen. Is the company prepared for when a, a natural disaster event happens? Uh, if they are, great. If they're not, uh, look, reach out to me. I'll help you. If, uh, if you don't want to hire me, I'll still give you some tips. That's fine. They, I go always help them out, um, and then uh, eventually maybe they'll hire me out. Say like, I should hire Ron in the beginning when we first spoke. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. And reminded me to that you know, COVID, the pandemic was also a natural disaster that no one saw it coming, right? And yeah, I'm just wanna, okay. One last question: Did you already start this company before COVID? And how did, you know have you helped any company that successfully? overcome the global pandemic in that sense so i've had i had my managed service provider company before i saw this at this disaster recovery and business continuity venture so during covid i, I did help different companies um you know like you just said a lot of companies weren't pre prepared a oh. lot of both for private sector and public sector uh companies businesses weren't prepared for what happened uh as you know and a lot of a lot of people. It took a long time for the process and the uh, things to come in place. Where again, this you know the the process was not set. Nothing was in place for when this type of pan, when the pandemic COVID nineteen hit. Nobody had any solutions of what to do. Okay, well, remote work was there, but it was never fully implemented or tested uh, when when this type of disaster happened. Cause None of us have been around to live it. Yeah. You know, it, it happened many years ago, you know, back in the early 1900s when um, the, the first pandemic happened. So we were, we never, we haven't been susceptible to it until it went three and a half years ago when COVID-19 hit worldwide. Yeah. And unfortunately, a lot of business being wiped out, right? Because of COVID-19. And, and because I was also running and before moving to, you know, to online and things like that. I was also running in a bit in a partnership with two other business partners. We we're running a retail business. And when it happened, we couldn't open our store, right? Um, so we did that business, but we managed to sustain throughout the whole period of um COVID-19. So thank you so much again for coming today and sharing your expertise with our listeners. Um all right, guys, I hope you learned a lot from today's episode. If you have any question, you can send us a message. You can send Ron an email, connect with him on LinkedIn, or leave a comment below, right? Um, we will, I will put all his link in the show notes below. So make sure you go and check it out, connect with him, and book a call with him. To connect with me, follow me on Instagram at Joanne Chan Coaching, and make sure you hit the subscribe button to this show so you'll never miss another juicy episode. And until next time, keep showing up. Success doesn't show up for you until you show up and pursue your own success. Thank you very much, Joanne. Thank you for listening to the Show Up Show with me, Joanne Chan. If you want to create more confidence, visibility, and authority in your business, send me a message on Instagram at Joanne Chan Coaching. DM me the word show up and I will send you my free signature training, Visibility Creates Possibilities that you can watch right away to start exploding your visibility today.